Welcome to our show. This video is long overdue. Today we take you to the Wabasha Street Caves in St. Paul, Minnesota. This place is so unique and beautiful. The Wabasha Street Caves hosts a variety of events including weddings, ghost and gangster tours, and swing nights with swing bands and a large dance floor. The owner, her mother, and her son are very warm and hospitable. This is also an infamous place that was a 1930s speakeasy and mobster hangout. Al Capone, John Dillon, Dillinger, Babyface Malone, and the Barker Gang, to name a few of the frequent customers. Murders occurred here, and bullet holes can still be seen in the walls. Spirits move objects, talk out loud, play music, and mess with the electronics. On one occasion, a chandelier bigger than myself fell to the ground, even though there was no reason for it. Men and women appear to be dancing on the dance floor to ghostly music, and male ghosts can be seen sitting at the bar. The caves are man-made, dug out from sandstone stone and mined for silica which was used to make glass. So there are no bugs and no bats or at least very little in this sealed environment. Join us as we interact with the spirits of those who cannot seem to leave. The Wabasha Street Caves have been highly acclaimed for both history and entertainment, but they are also highly acclaimed for haunted activity. The Minneapolis Star and Tribune recently rated them as the most haunted place in all of Minnesota. Care 11 News also rated them as Minnesota's most haunted. CBS News rated the Wabasha Street Caves as one of the most haunted places in all of America. Ghost hunting grandmas do not disagree with these ratings. Our only regret is that we didn't stay longer. If you don't include setup time, we only had two and a half hours to investigate and we were shy one IRS camera. But in the two and a half hours that we were there, we collected several EVPs and had flashlights seemingly going off to questions and by request. We saw some unexplained lights and orbs and our word box showed the owner's name when we asked about her. The best thing is that we believe we may have caught an apparition or two in a picture. Sit back and enjoy. This is where they were just digging out the cave? Uh, no, back when uh, alcohol was still legal, this was a uh, secret bar back here, but oh, when there's a secret and bar. When police start coming, they immediately oh. just blocked it all up. Oh, okay. I see. Where is it? Right there. Oh, okay. Okay, we are just here and the flashlight turned on by itself. And we haven't, we were just setting up. The IR on. Yep. Here we go. I'm okay. Come back here. There's an EMF over here. And here's poker chips that you can play with. Yep, they're worth like a thousand five hundred. Oh. Just jiggling around so you can hear my poker chips. Yep, you can make the noise off of them too. And we got them from the OK Corral. Do you know where that is? Yep. We're, uh, Doc Debbie brought poker chips as a trigger object, thinking that they did gambling in the caves. As we were setting up, she was carrying around the poker chips and laying them in different locations. It was at this point that we received a female EVP, and she says, Chip. Debbie, what do you think of the Wabasha cave so far, and what are your it's experiences? Really cool. I had a. I went to go get my equipment, and I heard some women's voices. So when you said I can't see, and that flashlight went on, I think it's one of the women. Oh. Okay, I'm just putting new batteries in here. Thanks for turning it on the first time. That was awesome. Yeah, you can do it again. Appreciate it if you did. 
do this word box on my phone for a little bit. And we Did you used to dance in the cave? Oh, flashlight went off. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Were you a dancer? Right. Are you one of the ladies that I heard? Could you turn off one of these? Over there by that other yep. So our flashlights aren't mag lights. They're really hard to turn on. And that light just lit up for us. So they're really hard. To, they're hard, even harder to turn off. There's some more coins over here, Sam. Okay. Here's some more. 500, 1,000. We got 500 and 1,000. And if you're women, we'd love to talk to you. It's right here. And if you're by it, okay. I'm going to turn this flashlight back off. Okay. This was a this was an old bar where they could. I'm just talking to the video. Oh. This is an old bar where they would. Um, they could easily block off this door here. Um, you can see the little holes so that they could hide their booze. So that's what that was going on. Okay, this is the flashlight that went off by itself. Of course, we didn't have our video camera on yet, but I'm going to get it to go back off, which is actually really hard to do. It's really hard to turn this thing. It's not like a mag light. Huh. Flashlight went off again. Oh my god. Thank you. Maybe we should I just them. asked if they would turn it on again. Right. So maybe we should put a cat ball over there. Five. So if you come by and you want to be colder and present yourself to us, go ahead. Entities. We don't believe in negativity. If you are, you need to leave. Oh, I just thought of something. What? Faith. That's the name. I was talking about the new owners. That's the name of the new owner. Is Faith? Yes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so I said, do you like the new owners? And then Faith, Faith came, came up. Out there. Oh. I didn't know that was her first name. Yeah. Her name's Faith. So, like, so you know Faith. You must like her. Is there anything you want to say to her? Oh, flashlight went on. Where? Right here. Right there. Oh my when God. we were talking about faith. I said, do you like her? And the flashlight goes on by itself. Did you see that, Daniel? Uh, oh. <laughs> we're talking about your mom and they like her. And then they lit up that flashlight right over there. Well, thank you. Thank you for lighting the flashlight. And then her name came across the word, word box. box. Right when I said, do you like the new owners? It said, Faith. So, oh, I just saw a flash. Oh, the, the flashlight, flashlight went on again. again. <laughs> well, I hope the GoPro is catching all of it. Yeah. I wonder if I should put, oh, Katie. My son's girlfriend is Katie. Oh, and it got a little brighter. Is your name Katie? Is your name Katie? Make the flashlight go a little bit up and down. Oh, it did. Oh, there it went again. Thank you. Do you see it going brighter? Yes, that's amazing. Thank you, Katie. At one point, we felt a cold spot. At this same time, we were moving one of our motion balls, and Debbie moved it and said, maybe it's better there. Right after this, we got a male EVP that clearly says the word better. Daniel, the son's owner, was long gone by that point, and it was only Debbie and I in the cave. At one point, we felt that someone was with us, and I heard a male voice come through the spirit box, but not very loudly. At this point, Debbie asks, is there a man with us? And you hear a man on the spirit box say, yep. We just got a male voice. Yeah, we just got a male voice, but it's very, very faint. Is there a, a man here with us? 
you said something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's getting cold in here. But I keep on changing, I keep on checking the gauge and it's not getting cold. Are you moving around us? Yeah. Oh, Debbie's found orb over there too. Yeah. Did you what? know the Barker family? We asked the spirits if they know the Barker family, which is an infamous murderous gang that frequented the Wabasha Caves in the 30s. On my tape recorder, the, in a very low voice, I can hear a man say no, and right after that, I hear a man with a higher voice say, that says, I know them. I don't think it's going to come across very well on this video because we use only rudimentary methods in transferring these audio clippings to you so sometimes it doesn't work well you'll have to trust me on this one but i'll play the recording nevertheless did you know the barker family Um, did you know Ma Barker? With the Barker game? The Barker boys? What does it say? Together. Are they all together? This picture is amazing. Did we catch not one, but two spirits? This is an empty cave room off to the side, which is completely dark. When you stand next to it, you cannot see anything. Also, there is nothing in the adjoining cave room to cause a reflection. This room is empty as well. To us, it looked like the smaller orange object has arm-like features on the sides. It seems like it is lifted off the ground as well. Behind this is a weird broken up light show going on. Is this another spirit manifesting? What really gets us is that in the first picture taken directly before this picture, there is nothing but darkness in the picture. Also, directly after, there is nothing as well. The owner, Faith, was showing us the very back caves, which are very underdeveloped and have no lights, so we couldn't videotape it at all. At one point, Debbie sees a fog around me, and I don't see it, but I'm I'm in a dark spot. When we listened to the tapes, um, at one point I say, thanks for coming near me, I appreciate it, and right after that, on the tapes, we hear a really sweet female voice say, mm-hmm, that voice is so faint it will not come through on a copy of a copy of a copy but um we'll play the recording of us interacting about it nevertheless look at this look at the fog right in front of you look at the fog in front of you i don't i don't see anything i don't think i'm going to be able to take a picture of it where is there a fog there was a fog right in front of you big huge fog well thank you i like when you come near did you get it in the picture at all or Oh, there's still the fog again. Thanks for coming around. I, I appreciate it. Can you show it again? Can you bring the fog up to Diane? You can, you can. As it turns out, the owner, Faith, was near an overhead light behind us, so she was able to film us as Debbie saw the fog come over me. In the last frame or two of the video, we can see the fog. I've included a still picture here for you of the last few frames. In this picture, you can see the fog over my face and also on Debbie's back. We also did catch the woman on tape saying, mm-hmm, after we thanked her for appearing. Female? 
just been I mean no, I, I keep on feeling like it's up in the field and I've got to do this. It's really weird. Are you up there? Up by the ceiling, hanging out. Look at this look at this right in front of you. Look at the fog in front of you. I don't I don't see anything. I don't think I'm gonna be able to take a picture of it. Here. Here. In our last videos, we will show you many orbs. There is very little dust in the caves, only sand that falls to the ground from the sandstone walls. The owner felt that when they rise from the floor, it may be sand, but not when they come horizontally. You will see that some appear more solid than others, and some do change directions. We will leave the analysis up to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I did send you the absolutely. Woo, that was a good one. Good, though. I honestly like it. Then there's. Um, there, did you see them? Over here on this side? Yep. yep. Do you see them? Do you see them? Okay. I've seen a lot. Okay, guys, I screwed up. Can you please just move it up? If you come back again, bring the orbs back. Yep, there are a few. There are a few that came back. Come over my head. Go by my third eye, right here. Yep, got it. Yep. Boom! <laughs> We were really excited about this last video that we are going to show you. After our investigation, we went over a few of the videos that the owner had taken with her phone during the investigation. There was a video with a shadow that came from the ceiling down to the floor, and we thought it was spiritual. I feel guilty because I asked the owner to search for it, and she spent much time doing so. She did find the video and sent it to me, but I feel that it is my hand going between the wall and the construction light that is making the shadow. We will let you be the judge of it, but I believe it's been debunked.